Messages from Transformers Chapel. The altar at which lives are transformed and altered. Remember what Moses said to Joshua and the children of Israel. Be not afraid, fear not, and be not dismayed. Sit back and listen. Be inspired and blessed. The most destructive enemy or element in human mind is fear. This message is from Pastor David Adjoy. We are talking about investment, how to invest wisely. Of all types of investment, the greatest investment of all is kingdom investment. When I mean kingdom investment, I'm talking about God's kingdom. Read some few verses. But let me quickly read the story of the richest American of all times. And as a matter of fact, today, if we have to pick him, you know, interestingly, the richest man of all time up till now happens to be an African from Mali. How many of you know him? Have you heard about Mansa Musa? Mansa Musa uh, ruled in West Africa. From Ghana to Timbuktu, Mali there. When he was going to Saudi Arabia in those days, he had about his own personal, guard, personal bodyguard were 500. About 1,000 of them. He carried about 60,000 people to Saudi Arabia in their days. This man died in 1331. Masa Musa happens to be an African and is the richest of all time. 400 billion worth. In their days, they had gold and salt and that was what he was trading with. And half of the whole world consumption of gold and salt came from that man. Now the second riches happens to be this one I want to talk about, John Rockefeller. The worth of John Rockefeller is 340 billion. Nobody, you see, Bill Gates that is the richest today is about 76, about 70, 76 billion. So you can imagine. And let me give you a story for us to understand what kingdom investment is all about because he happens to be a Christian. John Rockefeller or John Davidson Rockefeller was Amer was America-born philanthropist and industrialist. He founded the Standard Oil Company, which was the leader in the oil industry during his time. This company that he established was also the first ever U.S. business trust. Rockefeller was known for having revolutionary having revolutionized the petroleum industry. In all, all in all, with his total asset amounting $340 billion, after taking after consideration today's inflation, he was the richest American to have ever lived. Aside this, John D. Rockefeller was also the first American-born man to have net to have a net worth than one billion. So the first person to see one billion ever happens to be this man. Born in July 8, 1839 and died in May 23, 1937. Founded the Standard Oil of Without and then the net worth is that $340 billion. So he was widely considered the wealthiest America of all time. And the richest person in modern history. Look at how he distributed his resources. 50% to the kingdom of God. How many percent? To where? 
the kingdom of God. 20% for savings and 30% for himself. In Matthew chapter 9, I mean chapter 6, I read from verse 19 to 21. He said, Lay not for yourself treasures on earth. Where moth and wrath don't corrupt. Take note of that. Though it's not discouraging us from investing. Because moth and wrath are the things that eats up our money. Okay? Just like the one in Siokimao. It was eating up. Amen? But if I have sown that seed to the kingdom, I will get returns. Anytime you give to God, you are not losing money. <laughs> That's why he said, cast your bread upon the waters. He said, after some days, you will get it back. And you know the meaning of that? You see, God, you see, the Bible is just painting a picture that a bread is like foam. When you put it in water, it soaks in water. When you take the weight of a bread before you put it on water, it's not the same weight when you put it in water and bring it out to measure the weight. See, after some days, you will get it. Lay not for yourself treasures upon the earth. We are moth and wrath, dot corrupt, and we are thieves, break through and steal. He said, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. We are neither moth nor wrath, dot corrupt, and we are thieves, do not break through nor steal. Verse 21, he said, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be. That means this investment scheme, when understood, is enough to distinguish you among men. And then we jump to verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take note out for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink not yet for what for yet for your body what ye shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment he said behold the fowls of the air for they sow not neither do they reap nor gather into bands yet your heavenly father feedeth them are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? Verse 28. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lily of the field. How they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so close the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the heaven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Nor what shall we drink? Nor whither or wherewith shall we be clothed? He said, For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But as for you, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his structure says, and all these things shall be added unto you. He's actually talking about kingdom investment. He said, God first. So, when we talk about investing wisely, you have to know number one investment is God's kingdom. And there is nothing you get of the kingdom that will not come back to you. And a lot of people don't understand this. You 
You see, God will visit you this year. So what you lay up in the heavenlies has heavenly effect. I mean, has earthly effect. That's what he's saying. And this is the passage of a clear definition of kingdom investment scheme. It is not a donation. It is not a contribution. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So don't have a donation mentality. Don't have a contribution mentality. Are you getting me? It's not a charismatic trick to make you give to this helpless God. It is not a pastor scheme. It meant to get you involved in whatever they are doing. It is heavenly transaction. It's a spiritual transaction. And this transaction can never fail. It says focus on heaven first. The earthly one, you still have to do it. But that one involves risk. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. There's nothing you do on earth that is not risky. Amen. Even your job that you are doing is risky. But if life must go on, you have to ignore the risk and, and put your head inside it. Are you getting what I'm saying? May you have good understanding of what you are talking about. Can I hear your amen? amen. This is how to prosper. Amen. When you settle the spiritual man fast, amen, you will receive a not encouragement to do the others. So the first kingdom investment that you must think about now is kingdom investment. God has to be first. Lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. We are thief cannot break in. We are thief cannot corrupt. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So you can imagine the richest man of in all in, in America of all times, Rockefeller, happens to be a believer who gives 50%. That's more than tight to the kingdom of God. When we put all of them together, according to the, today's translation of Solomon's wealth, nobody is as rich as Solomon. So you can see that God is behind wealth. You will have it. I said you will have it. Can I hear your amen? I said you will have it. May you have it in Jesus' mighty name. God's first. And that is my area. Others will come and talk about their own area in second service. Praise God. I am a pastor, God's representative, so I have to talk about the kingdom that we are in. Are you getting me? Then the ones that is earthly that we need to do also, other people will come and tell you. Praise the Lord. I am not an expert in that area. Amen? But those who, who knows how to use money properly, how to give money direction, they would be telling us in the second service. That's why everyone must be part of because you are going to hear something you've never heard before. Are you getting me? Don't joke with this because this is your life. It's your life. This is your life. Praise the Lord. Rise up to your feet. Display for me quickly. Haggai chapter 2. Thus said the Lord of us, yet once a little while, it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth, and the sea and the dry land. The next verse, quickly. And I will shake all nations, and the desires of all nations shall come. And I will... Fill this house with glory, said a lot of hosts. He said, The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, said a lot of hosts. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Go to chapter 1. Move to the next verse. Hmm. Thus is a thus speak 
speaketh the Lord of hosts. Who is speaking? I said, who is speaking? Saying, these people say, the time is not come. The time that the lost house should be built. The next verse. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, comfortable house, and this house lie waste? That's talking about his house. He said, Now therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your way. Tell your neighbor, consider your ways. He said, Ye have so much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, and ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earned wages, earned wages, to put it into a bag with holes. So said the Lord of hosts. He said again, consider your ways. Tell your neighbor, consider your ways. He said, go up to the mountain and bring wood and build a house and I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified said the Lord he said you look for much and lo it came to little and when ye brought it home I did blow, blow upon it why? so said the Lord of hosts because of my house that is waste and ye run every man unto his own house Therefore, the heavens over you stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from yielding fruits. That's why some people are not blessed. Because they have neglected the house. He said, and I call for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon all, upon the new wine, and upon the oil. He's talking about businesses. And upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men. And you see, so God can call for a drought upon a man and upon cattle and about all the labors of your hands. You see, when God is the one standing against you, which prophet can deliver you? If God is the one standing against you, which prayer and fasting can deliver you? And that's what he's saying. May God deliver us. If I were you, I look for opportunity in the house of God to plug myself in. Praise the Lord. And not some, you know, something that you say, God, let me rest. You know, there are some offerings you give, hey, let me rest. When somebody is troubling you too much, you just give him something, he goes, hey, let me rest. Hey, may God not be like that to you. Can I hear your amen? God deserves your best. God deserves your best. God deserves your best. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. And may the Lord bless you. Hope you enjoyed, touched, and blessed to your next level. Worship with us at Transformers Chapel. We are situated on Kilimani Road, Elsie Plaza, off Eligeo, Maraquet, Adams Arcade Roundabout. Visit us on our website, www.transformerschapel.org or our Facebook page, Transformers Chapel, Nairobi. Mm -hmm.